This is DRF, Race of the Day. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the DRF Race of the Day for Tuesday, August the 24th, race number 11 at Parks. Let's throw up the field for the local prep for the Pennsylvania Derby. It's the grade three Smarty Jones. $300,000 is the purse. Obviously, three-year-olds, they're running a mile and a 16th. Download free formulator pass performances for this race on the Race of the Day event page at drf.com. Access them, handicap along with us. The number six, Fulsa Mike, is your eight to five morning line favorite. This horse is already a graded stakes winner at this distance this year, but was beaten at odds on last time out at Indiana Grand. Yeah, he, it feels like a really good spot for this horse, Dan. Um, I guess we'll see if he catches a little bit more pace this time because in that last race, the Indiana Derby did not have that much to run at and he went down as the favorite. Speaking of pace, we'll throw up the Timeform U.S. Pace Projector, and I'd like to urge everyone to visit timeformus.com. Once scratches are made official, I talked to some of the trainers of these horses. The three of the Jones boy is going to scratch for an allowance race at Parks on Wednesday, and the one Indian Lake is going to scratch for the upcoming Virginia Derby. So it looks like riding with Biden, the nine, could be loose. Yeah, and he's a pretty dangerous horse in there. It feels like that horse uh, riding with Biden still has some upside. And if he gets a, a clear early lead in here, he might be tough to catch. Again, Indian Lake expected to contest the Virginia Derby. So we'll start with the two fast Bob. This horse was a runner-up sprinting most recently. Let's take a look at this effort because this horse has been in very good form since being shipped to this circuit. He has a lot of work to do turning into the stretch. And while he never threatens the winner, he's pretty game to get up for second. Yes. I mean, his first two starts for this trainer were both pretty good and it felt like pretty significant improvement for him. Um, you know, he's never a threat in here. He's pretty game to be second uh, in this race. And this was, was, of course, on a cutback. And now he's going to stretch back out and try some better horses going long. The Jones boy, the three, again, expected to scratch. We'll move to the four of the King Cheek, who pulled up a little bit of an upset on Preakness week when he won the Sir Barton over the odds-on Baffert-trained runner Hosier. Now, Hosier is probably not that good, all things considered. The King Cheek then ran in this race, the Penn Mile. It was an off-the-turf race, a graded stake. The King Cheek up and on the pace down on the inside over this sloppy going. And he's just second best to Gershwin, who's probably just a little bit better on dirt than the King Cheek is. He's a very solid horse. He's three for three at Parks, and he could show some speed. Yeah, he should show speed in this race. Um, it feels like a good spot for them to go forward here as they go turf to dirt with this horse. I like him as a horse, Dan. I'm not sure that I feel like he's going to be able to deal with Folsom on his best day, but I do like the King Chick as a horse. Another horse going turf to dirt is the 5007, who I thought ran rather well on the turf, all things considered in the Kent last time out. Very sloppy ground, stretching him out to a mile and an eighth. A race without a ton of pace, won by a perfect trip winner, and he picked up some horses late. Let's go back to his prior start over sloppy going, and he had to pass the distance question in here in his first time around two turns, and he did. He got right up close to the pace. That's Dream Big Dreams, who I believe was the favorite for the Brittany Russell barn looming outside. And 007 never quits. Dream Big Dreams would come back to run second in an entry-level allowance with a 78 buyer. Game effort. Yeah, that's pretty much what you could say about all the sources ra uh, races, Dan. He's very, very game in the stretch. Um, he doesn't have that one fast race yet. He's going to have to improve to beat this field, but he's got some things going for him, and he's a real fighter in the stretch. Well, Folsom looked very good winning the Matt Wynn two starts back. He was much the best that day, making a four-wide sweep, turning into the stretch, and then drawing away from those foes. I think you're right about the Indiana Derby, and when I talked to Brad Cox about Folsom, he agreed with you. He didn't think there was enough pace for him, and he also mentioned that the track it got a little bit wet before that race, and he didn't seem to care for that, or at least that's what Florent Giroux seemed to indicate once he got off. Give this horse some pace. He probably comes running, and that horse that beat him, Mr. Wireless, is a nice one. Yeah, that's the thing, Dad. Not only didn't he have a, a real setup last time, but he probably was just facing a much better field as well. It's class relief here. He's sort of a standout on paper. Um, we don't really need to go on and on about him. He's supposed to be really hard to beat. Mr. Wireless, of course, returned to win the West Virginia Derby with a 92 buyer. Alonzo is an interesting colt with upside potential for trainer Juan Alvarado. Let's watch his last race, a one-turn mile at Gulfstream Park. Now, this is against Florida-bred 
one other thens. And he's in second, turning into the stretch as the favorite. He's under a little bit of a ride, but he's going to collar this 25 to one shot and go on to win in kind of workmanlike fashion. But the 85 buyer speed figure is kind of what stands out. Head and shoulders above what he's earned in recent starts. Uh, to me, the two turns is a little bit of a question mark, but it seems this horse it keeps improving. I, yeah, I agree. I mean, just based going from start to start with this horse, he's getting better with each one. Um, obviously, he has to improve again here, and he's got to do it, um, as you've already pointed out, around two turns for the first time. So things working against him, but he's lightly raced, and it feels like he has some upside. And to gravity was a nibbler for many of his starts in the spring, whether it be at Oak Lawn Park. And then he showed up at Monmouth, and he won two in a row for Jerry Hollendorfer. It earned him a spot in the Haskell. He had no shot in the Haskell. He was beaten 30 okay. lengths. Let's draw a line through that race. Uh, he probably has to improve off his two Monmouth races. And after 13 starts, how much upside's left? Yeah, there probably isn't any. Um, and he's got a couple of figures, I guess, that suggest if you want to throw him in there underneath, maybe you could get him in there. Um, the win two back, you know, he finally he was on a sloppy track. First of all, he finally got a little bit of pace in front of him. And he just beat a terrible horse in Mr. Winston. Butch Reed sends out riding with Biden and he sent him out to test him in the Dwyer last time out in New York off a couple of nice wins at parks. Let's watch the Dwyer effort. I like what a rad Ortiz did. He put this horse right on the front in a short field. He controlled the pace and first captain, a very expensive horse is going to end up running him down riding with Biden earned an 87 buyer speed figure that certainly puts him in the mix here. He could be the lone speed. When I talked to Butch about this horse, he says he seems to be getting better every day. He's put on about 50 pounds since the Dwyer. I mean, that's what it looks like on paper. Um, obviously, you and I haven't seen him in person, but on paper, it looks like he keeps getting better uh, day by day. I really liked his maiden win, Dan, going seven furlongs, three starts back. Um, I thought he ran fine when they stretched him out around two turns to win again in his next start. And we just saw that Dwyer, he ran well in there and he took another step forward. Top at time for Tuesday's race of the day. It's the grade three Smarty Jones. We'd love to give you a price. I just think if Folsom runs his race, he's supposed to beat this field. I just think Brad Cox has spotted him perfectly. I agree. I mean, I just didn't really have any confidence in betting against this horse. I know he's going to be a really short price, um, but I'm not trying to beat him. And I probably threw the second choice underneath then riding with Biden. Same superfecta, different order. Mike's going 6975. I'm going 6795. In the grade three Smarty Jones, it's one of two graded stakes scheduled at parks on Tuesday. Good luck.